Hey guys, my name is Major Singh and today I'm going to show you how we can get started programming a Arduino Uno as well as teach you guys how to build some really awesome circuits with a basic Arduino kit. So let's get started. For this tutorial you're going to need the following. An Arduino Uno board a programming cable which is used to program the Arduino Uno, a solderless breadboard from which we can connect our components, and of course accompanying male-to-male -male wires, a few 10 kilo ohm resistors, and lastly a couple of LEDs and push button switches. Okay guys, so before we can actually get started building some really awesome circuits with the Arduino platform, we firstly need to download a piece of software known as the Arduino IDE. And basically this allows us to type in our code, uh, compile it, and then upload it to our Arduino board. So in order to get this free piece of software, we're gonna head on over to arduino.cc, which is the homepage for the official Arduino website. Okay guys, so this is the homepage for the Arduino website. We're gonna head on over to the download tab at the top of the webpage. And this is the download page for the Arduino software. So the current version is 1.6.9. And on the right hand side, you can download the appropriate file for your operating system. Now, if you don't wanna download it for your operating system, you guys can go ahead and try out the new Arduino web editor. Now it usually takes one day for it to send to your email and it gives you a link which you can follow and then um, start using the, uh, the online version. So make sure you go ahead and register as soon as possible. In fact, why don't you guys go ahead and do it right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and download the Windows installer version. You can download the zip file if you want. Basically this will run from just a regular folder. It won't actually install it on your PC, which is good for campus computers, uh, work computers, and just stuff like that. But for us, we're gonna go ahead and download the Windows installer version. Then it's going to take you to a page where you can go ahead and donate if you would like, or you can just go ahead and download by clicking the just download button. Okay guys, so once it has finished download, you guys are gonna double click on the EXE and install it like usual. There's nothing different. Just click the next button continuously. There's no, um, low to a or, or it's gonna, not gonna try to install any sort of special browser or anything like that. So you guys can confidently go ahead and just click next, 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 next until it finalizes the installation. So this is the circuit that we are actually going to be building. This is basically the schematic view and I'm using a piece of software called Fritzing. I don't really use it that often. I just thought it might be easy to show you guys since it also has uh, Arduino compatibility. So this is the schematic. Pause it here if you want, and you guys can uh, build a circuit. This is the actual breadboard version of this circuit that I just showed you. So we have two push button switches, two resistors. These are 220 ohm resistors. Um, you might wanna use 10K instead. Do not use 220. Unfortunately, like I said, I don't really use this software that much. So I wasn't sure how to get another another resistor or change the, the value of them. But uh, these two are 10 kilo ohm resistors and this resistor here can be anything between 220 and 1K. This is just to protect the LED um, from overcurrent. So once again guys, this is the schematic view and this is a breadboard view. You guys can go ahead and copy the breadboard view exactly how you see it and everything should work just fine. Okay guys, so now onto the sponsor of the video which is actually the first sponsor I've ever had on any of my videos ever since three years I've been doing this. So I'm really excited to be talking to you about GearBest.com. Now they're an online retail store similar to Amazon or eBay, and they sell a whole range of stuff, guys. They sell action cameras, tablets, cell phones, um, electronics, a whole bunch of really cool stuff, guys. And I suggest checking them out. If you have one dollar to spend, go on GearBest.com. You'll find thousands of stuff to spend that single dollar on. And they went ahead and sent me this uh, this is just one of the products I sent, which was the basic Arduino learning kit. And I'm going to be using these in my future videos. That costs about 20 bucks. I've left a link in the description where I have a Wi-Fi module, a Bluetooth module, a temperature sensor, real-time clock, as well as this Arduino learning kit. And all of them have coupon codes, so you can get a bit more of a discount. Not sure why you would need a discount since everything is super cheap. But um, they have a whole range of stuff, guys. This 3D printer behind me costs about... 1,200 bucks from Amazon.com. They are selling 3D printers for about $200. Even laser cutting machines, which I spent about three or $400 on, they have one for 100 bucks. So I highly suggest checking out GearBest.com and I just want to thank them again for sponsoring this video. So let's get on with the project, guys.
Okay guys, so hopefully you've wired up everything already according to the schematic and breadboard layout I showed you earlier on the fritzing application. And uh, now we can get started programming our little circuit. But before we can, we need to firstly create a connection between our Arduino Uno, which is this guy right here, and our actual computer. And in order to do that, we're going to be using this, a simple type A to type B USB cable, which was also included in the kit that was provided by GearBest. So you guys already have everything that you need to get started. So all you're gonna do is just simply grab your Arduino, grab the cable, and for this demonstration, I'm using my 3D printer cable because it's a little bit longer. And we are just gonna plug it in to the little port there. Sorry if my hand is blocking it, guys. And once it's plugged in, you guys can see the power LED, which is this green LED right here lights up, as well as this LED here starts flashing. Now this LED is actually physically connected to pin 13 of our um, headers over here which means you can use it simply for debugging to check if your Arduino is working and that is exactly what GearBest has done. They have programmed the uh, simple blink sketch onto this uh, Atmel microcontroller and you guys can see it actually physically functioning on the LED. So now that we know our board is working we can actually get started programming in the software so let's move over to that guys. So this is the software that we're going to be using like I showed you earlier and we first need to configure our device. So we're going to go to tools, we're going to select our board and then we're simply going to be choosing the appropriate board. There's a whole bunch of different ones but for this purpose we are using the Arduino slash Genuino Uno board. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and make sure it is actually selected. Then we're going to select our port. So you guys can see it just simply connects to your USB. In this case, it detects that the Arduino slash Genuino board has been detected on COM4. So the next thing to do is to set up the programmer. So we're going to go to tools again, programmer, and we're going to select the Arduino ISP. And really guys, that's all you need to do in order to set up your board. So in the Arduino software, we have something called void setup and void loop. So it tells us to put our setup code in here and then to put our main code in here. Now, whatever is in the loop program, will basically loop over and over and over and over again until there is an interrupt or until the board is switched off or reset. So just above the void setup, we're actually gonna start typing some code. And the first thing that we need to do is declare our variables basically. So we have three inputs and outputs, right guys? We have two switches. So here's switch one, here's switch two. And then lastly, we have the LED. So these two switches are inputs, of course, and the LED is an output. So we're gonna use int and all we're going to do is give it some sort of name so let's say int btn for button one is equal to 13. now the reason why we're saying this is that we are basically saying that whatever is on pin 13 is um in this variable called button one so in this case pin 13 which is this pin right here is connected to this switch right here so this is your first button now basically we're going to retype out the same code except change change the variable as well as change the number. So in this case, it's gonna be instead of 13, it's gonna be 12. And this is gonna be button two. And then lastly, guys, we need to declare our LED. So we're gonna say int LED is equal to pin two. So if you guys are getting stuck, just go uh, back in the video a little bit and look at the pin declarations that we used in the uh, schematic as well as breadboard layout. So button one is connected to pin 13, button two is connected to pin 12 and the LED is actually connected to pin number two. So that is all you really have to do in, um, in this bit of code right up here. The next thing is to actually put up our code in the setup. So we need to tell our um, Arduino what is an input and output because all these headers here are actually digital IOs, which means they can be used as inputs or as outputs. But we need to tell the, pro, um, the Uno if what we are connecting to is an input or if it's an output. So all we're going to be using is a simple function that was created by the guys at Arduino, which is pin mode. Okay. So this is de going to declare if it is an input or if it's an output. So the first thing that we need to do is type in the variable name, which in this case is button one, comma, and we're going to tell you if it's an input or if it's an output. So a button one is an input. Okay. And we're going to copy and paste this two more times and just change the variable names. Okay, guys. So to recap, this pin mode function is built in into this IDE, okay? So the first argument it takes is the variable, which is button one, also known as whatever is connected to pin number 13, okay? And then the next thing that we need to take in is if it's an input or an output. So button one and button two are inputs and the LED is an output. 
So that is all we really need to put in the setup bit of code, okay guys? So now we can start looking at our actual functional code. What is gonna happen when you press the button? Uh, what is gonna happen when you press the second button? And what's gonna happen to the LED when those buttons are actually clicked? So let's take a look at what we're gonna be doing. Now what I have in mind for this is that when we click button one, which is this button right here, it's gonna make our LED, which is right over here, flash really slowly, maybe with a delay of about uh, one second, okay? And then when you click on the second button and when you actually hold down, make sure it, it has to be held down, guys. Um, so as you press and hold it down, maybe the flashing will be a little bit more rapid. So it'll flash a little bit faster just so that it can differentiate between the two buttons. Now, what this means is that we actually have to read from the switches into the Arduino, okay? Now, there's a function also written by the guys at the Arduino headquarters called digital read. So it's simply typed like this, digital read. It is case sensitive, guys, so don't forget that. Digital read, and we're going to be reading button one. Okay, so now basically in the void loop, all we are doing is continuously reading whatever button one is. So button one can either be a high or a low. So at the moment, this should be a high and that should be a low because that is how we connected our push button switches. Now it is no good if we are just reading the switch we need to save it into some sort of variable. So we're gonna simply save this to an integer and maybe call it uh, btn1r is equal to that. Okay, and we're just gonna copy and paste this bit of code again. And of course, change the variable name, guys. It's very important. So right now, what is happening is that we are actually reading whatever is in button one and storing it in this variable called button1r. So if, it's, um, if the switch is unpressed, button one R is gonna be a high. If the switch is pressed, then button one R is going to be a low. And now for those of you guys who follow my programming tutorials, it's going to be fairly simple from here on out. We can use something called if statements, okay? So in the first if statement, we're gonna check if button one R equals equals to zero. So that means when button one R is pressed, so as soon as you do this, then it's going to execute whatever code is in here. If it's not, then we're going to go to else if and button 2r equals equals zero. So basically what this code says is that if button one has been pressed, so if we go ahead and do that, then it's gonna execute whatever code is in here. Now if button one is not pressed, it's gonna go on to check button two status. Now if button two is pressed, which is this button right here, then it's gonna execute whatever is in this bit of code right here. So that's fairly simple, guys. All we're going to do is um, turn the LED on and off at different rates, okay? So once again, there is a function written by the guys at Arduino called digital write. So right here, we use digital read to read the input from a switch. And now we can use digital write to write whatever value we want to the output of something. In this case, the LED right here, okay? So if button one is pressed, we're going to digital write, then we need to tell it um, what pin we want to write to, which in this case is LED. And you guys can see LED is connected to pin two. And we need to write either a high or a low. So in this case, we are going to write a low. Now, when we're writing a low to this pin for the LED, it's actually going to turn it on because that is the way that we have everything set up. This LED is actually active low, okay? Then in order to create a delay, there's a function also in the Arduino IDE called delay. And it takes an argument of time in milliseconds. So one second in milliseconds is 1000 seconds, okay? Then I'm simply gonna copy and paste this again. And I'm just gonna change LED low to uh, LED high. And I'm mistakenly clicked insert there. Don't forget your semicolon guys. And that is basically what button one is going to be doing. So let's go ahead and actually program it to our little device right here. We're gonna go ahead and click the verify button and we can save it to our desktop or wherever you wish. And it's going to compile the sketch. Now this basically is called a sketch. Now once it tells us it's done compiling and we have no errors, we can go ahead and click on this upload button. And you guys will see some stuff flashing on your LED right here, the transmit and receive buttons and our LED is now on. So let me just zoom in here a second guys. Okay guys, so recall, that is button one, and this LED is on for some reason, okay? And we will address that in just a second. Um, but when we click on this LED and hold it down, we should actually see the LED starting to flash. 
and that is a precise one second uh, delay in between each each flash now when we let go you guys will see the led will stop flashing also like i said remember pin 13 is connected to um sorry that led is connected to pin 13 so you can see when i click on the on this button right here the led actually goes off and you guys can see that right there so now that we know we have that working let's go on to fiddle around with button number two so i'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this because um, why do you need to actually retype everything and we're going to change the 1000 millisecond delay to 100 milliseconds and this should make our um, LED flash a lot faster so once again upload this to our board and you guys can see the LED comes on again which will address so when we hold on this button you guys will see a one second delay between the flashing and when we let go it stops flashing when we click on the second button it should start flashing a lot faster and as you guys can see that is evident so that's it guys really simple project that you guys can build at home in just a few minutes something that's a lot more fun than just a basic blinking sketch which you're going to find from any other tutorial on the internet that's made for beginners so you guys can go ahead and expand on this program like i said why not uh, go ahead and actually implement some sort of method i'll check two buttons Add another button on there, add an LED, maybe flick, uh, switch between the two LEDs continuously. You know, guys, just go ahead and have fun with it. There's a lot of stuff that you can do, even at a beginner's level. Okay, guys, so that's it for this video. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I have a whole bunch of really cool programming tutorials in Java, and I'm going to be starting more electronics videos. Make sure to pick yourself up a kit from gearbest.com so we can get on with some more awesome projects. So once again, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.